<laughs> Good morning, my friends. All right, today another fine Revit tip for you all. <clears throat> okay, brought to you by Wow, I sure hope this works.com. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so how would you guys like a heads up on populating your like finish schedules or room schedules or door schedules? That um, <clears throat> so, what I want to show you guys is how to make a schedule key. Now, the key populates the schedule so you don't have to fill in. You know how on door schedules there are a hundred thousand little boxes all over the place? You don't have to go fill those in. In fact, even if those are type parameters and they tend to fill in one at a time, or they, they populate all of the cells for that type, you can still automate the whole thing with a schedule key. And today I'm going to show it with like a like a finish schedule and how you would go about that and um, <clears throat> and you can take this and run with it for any kind of schedule okay so that being said here let me just get back to the project and let's go look at our building where is ah there's the most beautiful little building in the whole wide world this is just my little example building truth is I have this building sitting in my template huh <laughs> so whenever I open a new project, there it is ready to go. And uh, everything's set up about it. And you can do this if you want. You can put anything you want in your template. Anyway, so that, that being said, here we go. Let's go to the plan for a second. Okay. So the plan view of this little building, I've got a bathroom. Yeah, I called it toilet. And we got a little conference room, a little reception area, and a micro office, which is kind of like the, the lobby. And so those are different areas that may have different finish types or finish materials in them, like different floor materials, wall materials, ceiling, base, that kind of stuff. All right. And then up on the second floor, let's do that. The second floor is just a big open office, and it probably has finishes up here that may differ from what's downstairs. So if I were to go down to my schedules and open up my finish schedule, Take a look. Mm -hmm. There's my finished schedule. Okay, let me put my face out of the way so you can see what's going on. Okay, we've got some rooms on the first floor, and there's the numbers of the rooms, and here's the names. But look at this. We don't have the floor finish, the base, the wall. We don't have the ceiling finish, ceiling height. We just don't have things populated in the finished schedule. So, wouldn't it be nice if I automated that so that it would push to these. Oh, yes, that would be great. All right, so here we go. This thing that I'm going to show you is called a finish key. And it's key to making this thing work. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let me, what we're going to do is go to view. And we're going to click on schedule. And on the drop down here, what we're looking for is it's actually a schedule for scheduling and quantities. But there's a trick here. I'm going to come down and we're going to schedule. These are rooms that we're scheduling that have these objects in them. So I'm going to come down to rooms and pick that. If I can get to it. There we go. Rooms. And this is, um, I'm going to give it a room um, finish. Okay. Spell it right. Finish. A f this is a room finish schedule or a room finish key. How about that? There we go. Room finish key. Okay, so let me show you how this works. This is where you switch it right here. Instead of actually calculating the building components and, and quantifying everything that's in your building, we're going to build a key. And so I'm going to click on that, okay? And the, the key name can be anything. And I'm just going to call it... Uh, um, let's just call it room, come on, Mike, room, um, finish, room, finish, uh, type, okay, whatever. So what happens is you need this, this is going to be the key name. And what we need here are the things that we want to populate over here in the finish schedule. So the first thing that we see over here is floor finish. So I would like the floor finish here. Next is base. Okay, base finish here. Anything that I want to pre-populate, anything that I want to push. So wall finish is next. 
And I believe if I were to scroll over there, ceiling finish, where is it? Uh, there it is, ceiling finish. But I don't want to pre-populate like the ceiling height for these rooms because uh, you'll see in a second, it, maybe the ceiling height is different in different types of rooms. Okay, that being said, let's just keep these like this. Floor finish, base, wall, ceiling. Okay, okay. And it pops up. Ready? Wait for it. There it is. Now, the, the name right here, the key name, could be the um, room type. And these are the, the different finishes for the different room types. So here we go. You, when you want more line items or more rows here, you just reach up and hit insert a data row. And I can just go clickety, 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 click. I can, I can add as many as I want. So let's say this first one is for um, lobby. And let's say in your project, maybe you've got a bedroom. You want to make all the finishes in a bedroom all the same. Or if you've got um, corridors, all the corridors. Uh, maybe you've got one for offices, okay? Here, we'll need another one. Insert another data row. We've got another um, for um, toilet uh, rooms. Or add another one for janitor's closet. See what I'm, saying? See what I'm doing here? Cl um, clotet, closet, closet. Man, it's hard to spell today. Okay, these are the different room types. And so your project may have corridors, may have stairwells, may have um, bedrooms, bathrooms, closets, any um, mechanical room. You may have, and multiple mechanical rooms. And so for every mechanical room, it'll push the finishes to that type. So watch what I'm doing. Here we've got bedrooms. So let's say there's a bedroom and it's got carpet, okay, carpet. And maybe the base is a nice wooden base and the wall is gypsum wallboard. You can just make your decisions right here. It's great. The ceiling is gypsum wallboard also. In my corridors, I've got carpet also and blah, blah, blah. See what I'm, see what I'm doing here? Maybe wood, janitor's closet, um, ex, um, how about concrete? Okay. Concrete. Spell it right, Mike. And no, no base in there and gypsum wall board and ceiling is exposed structure, whatever. See what I'm doing here? Lobby, let's say wood, a wood, wooden floor with a wooden base, okay? And gypsum wall board, you get the picture here. Corridors are gonna have gypsum wall board on the walls. Ceiling is gypsum wall board on Oh, wait, acoustical ceiling tiles down the corridors. Okay, I know you're with me. The lobby is going to have gypsum wallboard in it. And maybe gypsum wallboard and acoustical ceiling tile. Maybe a little bit of combination. Offices will have carpet. And so toilet rooms, tile. Work with me here. Tile base. Okay, offices, a wood base um, and the wall finish will be in the offices gypsum wall board but let's just say tile in the bathroom and the ceilings is gypsum wall board you I'm, I'm trying not to bore you but I'm showing you how these different room types have different finishes and we're going to see how that works in a second offices the ceilings are going to be mm -hmm, ACT whatever okay there we go done with that so here's how we do it we have built this schedule now, this little room finish schedule, <coughs> and it's a key. And so if I go back to my finish schedule, okay, what I need to do is add a, um, a column here that has that key in it. Okay, so the truth is I don't need to see first floor, first, first, first floor, and second. So let me just hide that for now. I'm going to right click on it and say hide this column. Okay, bam. And then I'm going to add. I'm going to go over to my fields here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add. If I look down this thing, you will see my keys in here. Whoa, look at that. Room finish type. Isn't that what I wrote earlier of what it was going to be? So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add it into my schedule. I'm going to push it up here to the top so I can see it. Okay. So there's my room finish type on the left. 
Wait for it. You're about to see it happen, people. Okay. So my micro office, that's, that's my lobby. So I can just drop down and pick lobby. Did you see what just happened? All the finishes just populated. My conference room is a kind of an office. And my toilet is a uh, wait, wait, toilet rooms. My reception area is kind of like an office. I can go make a new type board if I need to. But I'm going to make it as an office. And the open office upstairs is for offices. Are you kidding me? It's that easy? Look how fast these populate. And so that is how you make a schedule key and use it here. If I want to change the way I can even I can hide this if I want to and I, I just use this column over here to push information into my finish schedule for the different types and for, for the different um, room types. So if I had a large conference center or if I had a let's say a hotel, all the rooms, the, the actual units and the mechanical rooms and the corridors, I can quickly populate them just by letting the finish schedule know which finish type is appropriate for that space. And bam, it populates all these cells for you all the way across. And then you can go back in and say, okay, in the lobby, I've got a nine foot ceiling, okay? Or, or whatever the ceiling height is, doesn't matter. Anyway, it's fantastic. And if I want to update something, I can simply go back to that key, can go back to that key and say, okay, you know what? In the toilet rooms, I decided that the walls are not gonna be tile all the way up. They're gonna be gypsum wallboard and a slash tile, okay? A little bit of combination of both. And when you go back to your finished schedule, uh-huh, uh-huh, it's updated. Where is it? There it is, right there. The wall finish has been updated. So it's a great way, friends, to come back and come back to me. There we go. It's a great way to quickly populate your schedules if you have a the ability, you just have to think about your project, the ability to use a key. And finishes are one of the best examples for this. Build yourself a small key and push the different finishes for those spaces into your finish schedule. All right, I sure hope that helps you guys. If you have any questions on this, ask them in the description box below and uh, we'll go from there. And again, if you have any new um, exciting Revit tips that you would like to see here in uh, on these videos, just let me know. And you can do that in the uh, comments below as well. All right. You have a fantastic day, and I hope that helps you. Happy reveting. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.